after many a character creation challenge, it is time to get back to building my campaign book. Many of you have joined during my character creation streak, so long story short, I'm working on a campaign book. It's nowhere near ready to be done. Hey! Speaking of many people joining, we have hit 500 subscribers, which is kind of nuts. And you bet that I'm planning on doing a mushroom milestone video for 500 subscribers, but I kind of wanted to try and do something a little bit different and I need you guys' help. So here's what we're going to try and do. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter. I'm Lady Splitchin. The links are in the description as always. You're gonna send me a couple pictures of mushrooms or forest plants or really any plant that you think could inspire a really cool character design. And over the next week or two, I'm gonna try to gather enough suggestions so that I can make a super fun group of forest friends for my little mushroom milestone video. And if you don't have an Instagram or Twitter, that is totally fine. You can just leave a comment on this video and I can try and look up the plant that you're trying to describe or that you have the name of and we can try our best and include it so let's let's hope this works now with that announcement out of the way it is time to get back to what you all truly are here for the D, &D character creation content oh no lady splitchin did you forget to press record no not this time i intentionally did not record myself marking out the character heights and making the height chart and noting which character i had and hadn't drawn yet it's it's just a bunch of busy work and also me staring at the screen like in the upper right corner, you might notice some familiar names if you have been following the campaign book series for quite a while. It's Magda Mackay and Solanum Dolramund, two characters from previous videos from the city of Basilia in the Old Empire, both of whom are on a council called the Augury Syndicate, a governing collective of what is considered to be one of the most knowledgeable cities on the continent of Vassaldal, despite there being two other major cities on Vassaldal that boast prestigious schools of the arcane. Yes, I have decided it is high time Time to draw the rest of the Augury Syndicate. No, I'm not drawing all six of the remaining characters of the council in this video. I know I hate splitting things up into part one, part two, but I just don't have the energy to finish all six characters this week. But you will see three brand new, well, more like two and a half brand new characters that are on the council in Basilia. I say two and a half just because the character here is maybe one you recognize, but maybe not. It's a real reach back. She is from a video that was made seven months ago, which is kind of crazy to think that I've been working on this channel for even longer than seven months. She's from a video I called Speed Draw Scraps, where I took the footage from drawings that just didn't make it into their own video for various reasons, and I made a little compilation of all of them and explained why they didn't work. One of the characters featured in the video was Abiana Oraya. I had a lot of really cool plans for her. I said I was going to give her quilted clothing, a huge headdress, lots of gold, but the design I go with in this drawing is actually relatively similar to the drawing that I had bailed on the first time, and technically the drawing isn't over, so I can always go back and add more details if I want to, but I think I was honestly pretty harsh on myself for my first iteration of Councilwoman Oraya. However, I did add in a very fancy headdress, and instead of having her hair be brown, I gave her white hair because she is a drow. I'm not sure if her being a drow was something I changed after I made the first scrap drawing, because the initial drawing is very much not a drow at all, and the new drawing actually has her pointed ear white hair, and much more gray undertones. Before I talk about Abiana herself, let's break down the Augury Syndicate. The Augury Syndicate is the leading oligarchy, oligarchy, I don't know how to say things, in Basilia, composed of eight scholars, Abiana Oraya, Calilis Beaumont, Aurelian Vondegath, Luciano Agnolo, Magda Mackay, Ricard Urahal, Silva Colezzo, and Selenum Dolramund. The group is sworn to serve the Empire, protect Basilia, and preserve and expand the collection of knowledge that is kept within the libraries in the city. The Syndicate does many things besides just coordinating the affairs of Basilia. The members often serve as representatives and travel to the Exenere capital and other places around the continent. They act as local and traveling judges for court cases, approve patents for artifice and alchemical inventions, and personally oversee the organization and collection of information for all of the libraries in Basilia. 
Now, who is Abiana Oraya? People who see her remark that she is as beautiful as she is wise. Councilwoman Oraya has clawed her way from the bottom to a position in the Augury Syndicate, though to see her dark drow skin glittering with gold, it is hard to imagine her as anything less than a member of the governing society in Basilia, even if she has only been in the position for the last six years. She is elegant, dignified, and calculating. Her stalwart personality in even the most difficult of situations makes her an ideal judge for especially difficult cases, and Aviana is not afraid to challenge the other members of the syndicate or governing bodies of other locations. Her extensive knowledge and incredible memory makes her a difficult opponent to stand against. Back to the drawing, now that I've thought about it for a little bit, I think I do want to go back and work on Abiana a little more in the part 2 of this video. I just think I lost a little bit of the youth in her face and the complexity of her jewelry and clothing that I originally intended to have with her. I hope I remember to go back in and add more embroidery and gold and try to work in that quilting that I mentioned. Despite all that, I do love the colors more on this iteration of her. I know the overall color scheme is extremely similar with gold and blue, there's a coldness and depth to this version that I just like better. I really love the change from the dark hair to the white hair, and I'm glad I kept the natural hair instead of doing braids and dreads like I was going to do. I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to combine a heavy gold headdress with a halo of curls in a way that would make me feel proud, but look at her, she's so pretty. Oh, and look, it's our old friends Solanum and Magda. I wasn't originally going to include them in this group picture, but I also felt like it didn't really make sense to not have them in a group picture of the Augury Syndicate, but I was not going to to draw these two again. The next character I'm working out here is X Artificer, Tabaxi Calilus Beaumont. She is the youngest member of the Augury Syndicate, and she was not born in Basilia, but rather in the capital city of Exenir. Instead of continuing down a path of artificing, she took interest in the legal side of things and eventually made her way to Basilia. Calilus's wit is as quick as her fuse is short. She is not a patient person. However, her quick dealings and keen discernment make her a fan and favorite when it comes to court hearings. Her artificer background does not only supply her with knowledge for legal purposes, but also her artificing comes in handy when it comes to the oldest member of the syndicate, Aurelian Vondegath, a warforged that is well over 700 years old. The entire time I was drawing Calilus, I was thinking to myself, if I do a bad job at drawing this, then obviously it's going to look bad. But if I do too good at this, then people are going to wonder, where is all the furry art that I've been hiding all of these years. And truly, I I am not well versed at all in drawing anthropomorphic creatures. It's just not something I do. Okay, so maybe I do it a little bit more than I think, but I still would not call it my forte. Nonetheless, I do love cats, I love drawing cats, and I very much enjoy drawing this character combination of sand cat and ocelot. Compared to Aviana, she has a much simpler outfit. She has this jumpsuit, romper situation, and the harness with the books and tools. I think it's very on brand. She'll want to keep her reference book close, but she also highly values mobility and comfort. And she also has her two small and out of the way piercings, enough to look cool but not enough to annoy her while she's working. Honestly, I was pretty surprised myself with how quickly I managed to get Calilus drawn. Again, not really a subject matter I consider my strong suit, but I was still super pleased with how she came out. Last character for the video, tragic, I know I know, but go easy on me. And also, it's not Aurelian Vondegath, the 700 year old warforged, but rather it's a character by the name of Luciano Agnolo. And let me tell you, I have had had the vision of this man in my soul for ages and I am so glad to be getting him down on paper, or digital paper at least. This is Luciano Agnolo, who pursued a seat in the syndicate to follow in the footsteps of his mother, Lorelai Agnolo. Luciano was born into and has seen the wealth and splendor that Basilia offers, but is keenly aware of the dark sides of high society. Luciano has an eye made of a glassy gemstone material that is rumored to allow him to see the lies that people tell. His life outside of the syndicate is incredibly secretive. Even his spouse and children, if he has any, are a secret. While the secretive nature 
nature is not generally well received by the public, his incredible insight and thorough completion of syndicate tasks have gained the trust of the people of Basilia who respect and revere him as thoroughly as they did his mother. I personally have my own plans for Luciano and why he's so secretive, but it is something I have left intentionally vague for the book. A lot of other syndicate members have their own dark dealings and secrets that they have. I wanted to leave a sort of buffer character for dungeon masters to mix in as they desired. Maybe Luciano's a contact for the Ouroboros family. Maybe he's just a guy who likes a particularly quiet life. And maybe he's pulling the strings for one of the other syndicate members and their secrets. Councilman Agnolo is also someone I fully intend to revisit with more embroidery and details when I have the time and energy to do so. He has a much more wintry look because of the fur and I'm just not sold on the color scheme of his clothing just yet. I like the cape, but at the same time, Basilia is not really a place that experiences particularly frigid winters. Seriously, the climate of Vasildal is insane. I don't ever intend to make it make sense. Why are some of the places dry? Why some places are constantly lush? And why do others experience all four seasons? That's a problem for another time? Another person? Hard to say. But back to Mr. Ignolo, I think he's got good shapes on him. This is a very good foundation. I think I still want to push and pull it a little more, but he's got a lot of just super cool characteristics like the dreadlocks, the glass eye, the cape. I really hope I can make that cape work. Look at them all. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. I think this has probably been one of the shortest speed draws I've done in a while, but you know what, time, energy, and character design wise, I think we did pretty good. High fives to all of us, we did it, we made it to the end. Super proud of me, super proud of you, and don't forget, send me those mushrooms and plants or whatever you want to send me. I can't tell you what or what not to send me, but I mean, at least try to stay within the realm of plant or fungus because, you know, that's that's the prompt. But someday I might do like a prickly alpaca style, send me pictures to make random characters from someday. That would be another good rainy day project for like a tough week. And also it would be super on brand of me to start a completely new playlist and new series style. And I should probably finish one of those things that I've been working on for over seven months now, but you know, that's never stopped me from starting a new project before. So should it stop me this time? Maybe, but who knows? Not me.